The story begins by showing the Mitarai family who is known for being a happy and close-knit bunch. Ansu, the oldest daughter, was a clever kid. She grew up learning the ropes of simple living, which made her quite skilled at managing household chores and assisting her mother, even though they came from a well-off background. Alongside her mom, Anzu shares the house with her dad and her younger sister Yuzu. One day, Anzu's mom, Satsuki, attended a school meeting for parents. There she crossed paths with Makiko, Shinji's mom. You could tell right away that Satsuki and Makiko were quite different. See, Makiko is a single mom who's struggling financially, taking care of her two sons. But Makiko was seriously impressed by Satsuki when they met. Not only does Satsuki have a kind way of talking, but she also carries herself with grace. The two vetted off and became friends. As time goes on, Makiko starts imitating Satsuki's appearance. Same hairstyle, interests, and way of talking, it's like she's really eager to be just like Satsuki. She also starts bringing her two sons over to the Midorai family's place to hang out quite often. Only Anzu notices that whenever Makiko comes around, some of her mom's things tend to go missing. Anzu starts suspecting Makiko of being behind this. Then, a terrible thing happens one day. A fire breaks out and burns down the Midorai family's house. At first, Anzu's mom blames herself, thinking she forgot to turn off the stove. She's filled with guilt toward her husband and their two kids. But the problems don't stop there. Anzu's parents decide to get a divorce, and Satsuki has to take her two daughters with her. Shortly after the divorce, they find out that Anzu's dad has remarried, and the new wife is none other than Makiko, Satsuki's best friend. From this point on, Anzu always held a strong belief in her mother's innocence regarding the fire incident. She distinctly remembered the night of the fire, when she saw Makiko smirking as their world crumbled. Anzu suspected that, Driven by jealousy, Makiko intentionally set their house ablaze to tarnish her mom's reputation and take over her role, aiming to replace Satsuki and become part of the Midorai family. Makiko's life drastically transformed from poverty to wealth, along with her two sons. Fast forward 13 years and Ansu, along with her sister Yuzu, resides in a modest dwelling. Ansu still vividly recalled the expression on her mother's face that night when their home was devoured by flames. This memory fueled her determination to hatch a plan. She decided to infiltrate the Midorai family's household. Assuming the identity of Shizuka Yamachi, she underwent special training to become a new housekeeper through mother service. Having just arrived, Ansu was quickly ushered inside by Makiko. Makiko insisted on keeping the fact that she was hiring a housekeeper a secret from others. Unbeknownst to Makiko, she didn't recognize Shizuka, who was actually Ansu, the daughter of her best friend Satsuki. Ansu had grown into a beautiful young woman who no longer wore glasses. Makiko instructed Ansu to thoroughly clean the first floor, aiming to make it appear as though the house had been uninhabited for a while. Makiko's current job as an amateur magazine model kept her incredibly busy, preventing her from taking care of the house herself. Ansu, however, didn't just want to be seen as a model with a grasp on cosmetics. She also aimed to prove her skills as a capable homemaker. Makiko laid out a few ground rules for Ansu. No going upstairs, no opening the door for delivery people, and most importantly, absolutely no tolerance for stealing anything from the house. Once Makiko left, Anzu diligently got to work. She meticulously cleaned every nook and cranny on the first floor, making sure not a speck of dust was left behind. Anzu was determined not to let Makiko down. She was still on a trial period, and her performance would significantly influence Makiko's decision on whether to officially hire her or not. Beneath it all, Anzu's ultimate aim was to uncover the truth behind the tragic fire that had consumed her family's home. Anzu strongly suspected that Makiko was responsible for this catastrophic incident. As she cleaned the sofa, Anzu accidentally stumbled upon a strand of hair that resembled her mother's. Acting on impulse, she swiftly tucked it into her pocket. However, a strange feeling crept over her from upstairs, as if someone had been observing her every move. When Makiko returned home, Anzu informed her that she had finished the tasks as requested. Impressed by Anzu's impeccable work, Makiko promptly decided to hire her as the household's official housekeeper. Anzu's entry into the Midorai family went rather smoothly, without raising suspicion. She was resolute in her determination to reclaim everything that Makiko had taken away from them. Anzu shared the hairpin she had found with her sister Yuzu. This hairpin bore the initials SM, which stood for Satsuki Midorai, their mother. Essentially, it was a unique hairpin that only their mother possessed. 
It was evident that Makiko had stolen it. Ansu firmly believed that there must be other belongings of their mothers within the house, considering that whenever Makiko came over in the past, some of their mother's things always seemed to vanish. This extended to potential evidence that could shed light on the culprits behind the fire. Anzu's motivation for seeking out these items was to eventually prove that her mother was not responsible for the fodder. However, her mother now suffers from dissociative amnesia, a condition where one loses memory as a defense mechanism following intense shock or prolonged stress. This meant that her mother's memories were fragmented, and she required a lengthy hospitalization period. The following day, Ansu went about her usual routine, taking care of the Midorai family's house. In addition to her adeptness at cleaning, Makiko hadn't expected that Anzu was also a talented cook. Growing up with a single mother, Anzu used to prepare meals for her sister when their mother was at work. With Makiko out of the house, Anzu seized the opportunity to initiate her plan to investigate the upper floor. She spotted an open door leading to a room and decided to enter. The state of the room was chaotic, with clothes and food strewn everywhere. Before long, the room's occupant returned and was taken aback to find Anzu in his space. Despite Anzu's introduction as the new housekeeper, the young man rudely demanded her to leave. After finishing her work, Anzu headed over to her best friend's house, Korea. Korea had been instrumental in helping Anzu gather information about the Midorai family and was also the one who provided Anzu with the name Shizuka. There, Anzu recounted the eerie encounter with the man she had stumbled upon upstairs. It appeared to be Shinji, the youngest son of Makiko. The following day, Ansu decided to express her gratitude to Shinji for not reporting her to his mother by cooking him some food. Since Shinji had been avoiding opening the door, Ansu left the food outside his room. From a distance, Ansu watched as Shinji enjoyed the meal, and this brought her a sense of happiness. Encouraged by his response, she started cooking more food for him. Ansu also tried striking up a conversation, tapping into Shinji's interest in video games and football, but he remained unresponsive. Then, Anzu shared her own fascination with the stars, and surprisingly, Shinji responded. It turned out that he shared her interest in stars. This revelation puzzled Anzu since she had previously thought that it was Shinji's older brother who had an affinity for stargazing. It dawned on her that she might have been mistaken about the person in the room. It was likely not Shinji, but his brother Kichi. Anzu began to contemplate what might have led to Kichi's current circumstances. From what she knew, Kichi used to be a bright and friendly child whom Anzu greatly admired. Anzu cherished a compass that Kichi had once gifted her, which she still kept. Anzu was convinced that something significant must have transpired to cause such a dramatic change in Kichi's life. While at Korea's place, the two girls delved into an investigation about a knitted sweater they had noticed in Makiko's social media pictures. Anzu recalled that this particular sweater was identical to one her mother owned. Ansu and her father had examined CCTV footage prior to the fire incident. They had discovered a person wearing a similar patterned cardigan rushing out of the house. Even though the perpetrator's face wasn't visible, based on this footage, her father had come to believe that her mother was the one responsible. However, Ansu distinctly remembered that her mother hadn't been wearing that cardigan on the day of the incident. If it turned out that Makiko had the cardigan all along, it would serve as evidence that Makiko was the person captured on the CCTV. With this in mind, Anzu felt compelled to infiltrate Makiko's clothing room to search for the cardigan. Observing her brother's determined efforts without giving up, Yuza couldn't remain silent any longer. It turned out that Yuza had crossed paths with Shinji at a party. They swapped contact information, and during their conversation, Shinji had recognized Yuzu as his half-sister. He had also developed feelings for her. Yuzu seized this opportunity to glean all possible information from Shinji particularly about Makiko's secrets. Gradually, the public started realizing that Makiko was a hardworking woman who could handle various responsibilities, from her modeling career to house chores. Anzu's contributions were deeply appreciated by Makiko. Anzu not only managed household tasks skillfully but also offered valuable advice that positively impacted Makiko's career. Consequently, Makiko began trusting Anzu more, to the point where Anzu was allowed to clean the second floor which had previously been off-limits. When the right moment arrived, Anzu entered Makiko's dressing room in search of her mother's cardigan. As anticipated, she located the knitwear. Discovering it evoked a sense of sadness and empathy for her mother. It became evident that the accusations against her mother as the arsonist had been a grave mistake. As it turned out, 
13 years prior, Ansu had hidden the memory card containing CCTV footage in her father's medical records room, making sure it remained well concealed. Currently, Anzu's primary concern revolved around devising a plan to retrieve the memory card from the hospital without getting caught. Coincidentally, Mitarai Hospital was situated right behind the house. The only way to access it was by using the key card that every staff member possessed. In light of this, Ansu meticulously searched through each drawer, hoping that either Makiko or her children had left the card there. Unfortunately, her efforts were interrupted by Kichi, who had been observing her suspicious behavior from the outset. He had attempted to uncover Shizuka Yamachi's true identity, but had come up empty-handed. Yet, upon pondering how the girl could possess such detailed knowledge about his family, Kichi arrived at the conclusion that she must have lived in that house before. He had no doubt that the girl who had assumed the role of their housemaid under the name Shizuka Yamachi was, in fact, Anzu Murata. Despite Anzu's attempts to reason with him, Kichi discreetly installs a camera in the dressing room, capturing Anzu's activities as she searches through the room. Eventually, Anzu explains her true motive. She's trying to locate her mother's belongings in order to help trigger her mother's memories, as she's suffering from dissociative amnesia. However, Kichi misunderstands and believes Anzu is accusing his mother of theft. Kichi contemplates informing his mother about Anzu's unauthorized entry and false identity, a move that could put Anzu's safety at risk. Anzu initially fears that Kichi will expose her true identity. Surprisingly, the next day, Makiko asks Anzu to come over and teach her cooking. Anzu is puzzled by Kichi's silence, but realizes he must appreciate how Anzu has improved the household's organization. Kichi, as Anzu remembers, used to be a person who looked up at the sky with a smile kind-hearted and optimistic about the world. However, his current demeanor is a stark contrast to his former self. Anzu hopes that Kichi can rediscover his previous self and not remain isolated in his room. Feeling the need for assistance, Ansu reaches out to Yuzu for help. She plans to utilize Yuzu's connection with Shinji to retrieve the memory card from Midorai Hospital where it's stored. Yuzu devises a plan to visit her father, using the opportunity to covertly search for a chance to access the patient's medical record room. True to Ansu's guidance, Yuzu successfully locates the memory card. Collaborating with Korea, they compare the cardigan Ansu discovered in Makiko's wardrobe with the one seen in the CCTV footage. Their investigation confirms that the two cardigans are indeed identical. However, this evidence alone isn't sufficient to establish Mekiko's presence in the video, as the perpetrator's face remains obscured. To build a stronger case, they still require more compelling evidence. The following day, Kichi confronted Anzu, asserting that her parents were toxic and weak, suggesting that Anzu's mother inadvertently caused the house fire. Anzu, unwilling to tolerate such an accusation against her mother, reacted strongly and confronted Kichi. She vehemently defended her mother, arguing that she couldn't have been the one responsible. For 13 years, Anzu had been suspicious of a single individual, and now that she was back in the house, she was convinced that Makiko was the true perpetrator. Anzu's declaration appeared to stir up Kichi's old doubts, the ones he desperately wanted to forget. If Anzu truly intended to unearth the truth behind the events of that day, Kichi was ready to assist her in doing so. For years, he had barely left the house, which had made it challenging for him to interact with others and adjust to life outside. His behavior seemed to stem from a desire to escape the scrutiny of those around him, further exacerbated by his lack of friends. During his high school years, Kichi dedicated himself to intense studying, hoping to alter his circumstances. He even managed to pass an exam and briefly attend university. However, he abruptly quit after approximately two months due to the unauthorized spread of his personal information. Rumors circulated that Kichi had gained admission to medical school through an insider connection. Initially, Kichi had dismissed the rumors about his university admission as unfounded. However, upon questioning his mother, he discovered that she had indeed secretly arranged a bribe for his graduation, doubting his own abilities. Despite being capable of passing the rigorous exams on his own, Kichi's mother's intervention tarnished his reputation. People began perceiving him as someone who had secured his spot through connections, leading to online defamation and widespread negative attention. For a decade, he confined himself to his room, gripped by the fear of public scrutiny. This profound insecurity was what had kept Kichi trapped within his room. Kichi then took Anzu to their former residence before moving into the Midorai family home. He believed that the truth Anzu sought might be concealed there. 
He accessed the attic and retrieved a laptop he had stashed away. According to Kichi, this laptop contained a browsing history that his mother had recorded like a diary. He believed that this could hold the answers Ansu was searching for. The first entry in the diary coincided with the day Makiko met Setsuki. Coming from a background of financial struggle, Kichida's mother and his sister were captivated by the lifestyle of the Midorai family. They returned home full of wonder, yet also starkly reminded of the hardships they faced. Fueled by enthusiasm, Makiko even stayed up late to document her feelings in the diary titled Aliza, symbolizing the beginning of her attempt to emulate Anzu's motherly life. Kichi suspected there was something peculiar about the fire incident, leading him to believe that the laptop might hold crucial information. Meanwhile, Yuzu was determined to reconnect with her father. She aimed to present evidence that the cardigan seen in the surveillance footage was the same one Makiko had worn in her photo. Yuzu's father intended to examine the contents of Makiko's wardrobe that night. As agreed, Yuzu returned to her father the next day, assuming he had found the cardigan. However, Makiko also appeared at the cafe. She had come to eavesdrop on her husband's conversation with Yuzu. Yuzu disclosed her intention to prove that Makiko, not Anzu's mother, was responsible for the fire. As for the cardigan evidence, Yuzu's father had already checked her closet, but failed to locate the clothing item there. In the absence of concrete evidence, Makiko warns Yuzu to cease her attempts to disrupt her family. Unbeknownst to Makiko, Anzu's involvement remains concealed, with Yuzu claiming that Anzu moved away a long time ago and hasn't been in touch since. However, Makiko remains curious about how her husband met Yuzu. As it turns out, Makiko covertly instructs the head nurse, Ichihora, to monitor her husband's activities. Learning about this, Yuzu expresses her disappointment to her sister. Their hard-earned evidence is now compromised due to Makiko's interference. Yuzu is confident that this setback is an indication that they are drawing closer to unveiling the truth and believes that there must be another way to achieve their goal. That night, Ansu takes a risky step and meets her father, revealing her true identity in the process. Having been apart for so long, her father initially recognizes her only as the housemaid in their home. He's taken aback to realize that the young woman standing before him is his biological daughter, whom he hasn't seen in 13 years. Ansu shows him a photo of the cardigan she found in Makiko's wardrobe, presenting clear evidence of Makiko's involvement in the fire. Ansu is disheartened that her father chooses to believe Makiko's lies over their children's words. Ansu learns that her father Osamu had been manipulated by Makiko. Makiko had told him that Satsuki set their house ablaze out of resentment towards the Midorai family, a narrative that was seemingly supported by the CCD footage. Ansu is puzzled as to why her father didn't hand over the footage to the police. She discovers that Osamu, as the hospital director, was wary of tarnishing his reputation if a police investigation were to ensue. This led him to halt the inquiry. Additionally, he believed that Satsuki's unstable mental state at the time might have driven her to act recklessly, including potentially starting the fire. Anzu's emotions upon hearing her father's words are a mix of deep sadness and an urge to confront him but her actions are halted by Chief Nurse Ichihora. The Chief Nurse reveals the presence of hidden recording devices that captured their entire conversation. These actions were all orchestrated by Makiko, who had instructed Ichihora to surveil her husband due to her significant distrust. Ichihora recounts an incident from the night of the fire. She had accidentally dropped a medical record, and Satsuki had kindly helped her tidy it up. Given this interaction, Ichihara finds it hard to believe that Setsuki could have been responsible for starting the fire. Ichihara sternly warns Osamu not to underestimate Anzu, revealing that she has meticulously documented all their conversations. She vows to safeguard Anzu's identity at any cost. While Makiko remains unaware, Ichihara insists that Anzu continue her impersonation as Shizuka Yamachi to prove her mother's innocence. Following this conversation, Osamu not only retains Anzu as a housekeeper, but also assigns her the role of Makiko's personal manager. Outside the house, Anzu handles Makiko's transportation and event scheduling, while at home, she resumes her duties of taking care of the Midorai household. Ichihara maintains her practice of providing fabricated reports to ensure that Makiko doesn't grow suspicious of Anzu and Yuzu. One day, Makiko receives a message from an unfamiliar account. The message contains a link to a blog that recounts stories involving Makiko and an old online friend from 13 years ago. The sender, named Mujina, threatens to expose the lies of a model with the initials M. Makiko immediately panics, 
realizing that Mujina is a member of the Oliza community she was once part of. The trouble began when Makiko stole Satsuki's diamond earrings, which she then posted about on the website. The post garnered significant attention, with comments pouring in. Emboldened by the response, Makiko escalated from jewelry to bags and clothing for subsequent uploads. On the website, Mujina indicates that the individual M now works in the entertainment industry and frequently appears on television. Initially, Makiko wasn't overly concerned due to the modest view count, but to her surprise, within hours, Mujina's story amassed around 5,000 likes and 10,000 views. A majority of readers were eagerly speculating about the identity of M. Makiko starts pondering who might hold a grudge against her. Yuzu emerges as a prominent candidate in her thoughts. Makiko visits Yuzu's home and brings her back to her house. She suspects Yuzu aims to tarnish her reputation. However, Yuzu has recollections from her childhood. She remembers witnessing Makiko secretly entering her mother's closet on the day of the fire, followed by the house catching fire, presumably to destroy evidence. Yuzu's only hope lies in Mujina's post, serving as evidence that Makiko stole her mother's belongings. She contemplates posing as Eliza on the internet. Strangely, when Yuzu checks Mujina's blog, the post is vanished. It's Makiko's turn to challenge Yuzu, questioning whether Yuzu can prove that on the day of the incident, Makiko was indeed at her own house. After a while, Anzu comes to Makiko to present the survey results and manuscript, but her true intention goes beyond that. In front of everyone, Anzu reveals that Makiko had sent her to meet Mujina, urging her to delete the story post. According to the address Makiko provided, Mujina has spent the past 10 years caring for her parents and working to make a living. This busy lifestyle leaves her with no time to watch TV or use the internet, let alone post stories about Makiko Midorai. Mujina doesn't even recognize Makiko's name, implying that someone else has been impersonating her on the internet. Anzu points out that all the posts were fabricated. This scheme was conceived by Kichi, who suggested creating a blog in Mujina's name. They also acquired numerous fake social media accounts to make the comments appear genuine and create a viral effect if Makiko were to discover the site. This strategy was meant to provoke Makiko into revealing the true whereabouts of the real Mujina. Astonishingly, the actual Mujina possessed a photo from 13 years ago, when she met fans under her alias Eliza a photo that clearly shows Makiko wearing a cardigan owned by Satsuki. This evidence leaves Makiko with no room to refute the truth. Finally, the girl, who had been working as a housekeeper, revealed her true name, Anzu Murata. Makiko's lies only make things worse, as she tries to escape the truth. Anzu knows every corner of the house, making it futile for Makiko to hide. Anzu promises to pursue her no matter where she goes. Seeing Kichi's expression, Makiko confesses to setting the house on fire. Anzu could have sought revenge for her mother's suffering, but she restrains herself. This marks Anzu's last day as Shizuka Yamachi. Anzu asks Makiko to apologize to her mother and release her from guilt. But Makiko's true nature surfaces, she's unwilling to let go of her wealth and fame. After warning Osamu not to divorce her, Makiko faces journalists and claims that there are parties trying to harm her family with baseless rumors and online attacks. Anzu, tired of dealing with Makiko's lack of remorse, witnesses this. Makiko seems undeterred and unapologetic. Thinking the issue is resolved, Makiko is shocked yet again when a post appears on her Instagram. The post features a photo of her messy house, along with a picture of the housekeeper. This exposes Makiko's shortcomings, like her poor cooking, untidiness, drinking habits, and smoking. Someone else has taken control of Makiko's Instagram account and Makiko is deeply embarrassed by the embarrassing posts. She decides to visit Satsuki at the hospital to clear the air. Satsuki still remembers Makiko and shows her the items Anzu had collected to help restore her memory. Satsuki reveals that she hacked Makiko's Instagram and obtained the incriminating photo from someone close to Makiko. Satsuki claims that Makiko never truly loved Osamu and proves it by revealing that Makiko's Instagram password is still linked to her ex-husband's marriage date. This suggests that Makiko might still have feelings for her ex. Unlike Makiko, Satsuki's love has always been solely for her family. Satsuki admits that she despises Makiko for taking everything from her. Satsuki's actions seem like a form of revenge. Makiko once destroyed their house, and now Satsuki is aiming to ruin Makiko's career and fame. Two weeks went by and Makiko and her family stayed holed up in their house due to the persistent presence of reporters outside. 
Negative comments and accusations kept appearing online, increasing Makiko's frustration. Meanwhile, Kichi's sense of guilt grew, and he started feeling unworthy of living in the house. He contemplated jumping from a height to hurt himself. Ignoring everyone around, he rushed to the playground. Ansu, who had been following the news online, tracked down Kichi and found him in the garden where they used to make memories. Kichi expressed that he no longer cared about others' opinions but hoped that Ansu wouldn't hate him. At the Minarai residence, a surprising event unfolded as a police officer entered the house. Osamu had reported Makiko for the arson incident that happened 14 years ago. The detective's attention was drawn to a statement in the original investigation report. It mentioned a witness who saw a boy near the kitchen door when the fire started. Could this child be Makiko's son? The truth was yet to be proven. The following day, it was Kichi's turn to take a step forward. He surrendered himself to the police station, confessing to being the one who set the Midorai family's house on fire. It appeared that Kichi had intentionally done this, possibly to protect his mother or for some other reason. Ansu, seeking answers, visited Makiko. She questioned whether Makiko's confession about causing the fire was true. Makiko explained that she confessed to shield her son from the truth. In reality, on the day Yuzu caught up with her, Makiko had intended to return all the items she had stolen from Satsuki in the past. However, in her panic, she forgot to return some items, including a cardigan. Feeling overwhelmed by her own actions, she had even contemplated turning herself into the police. Yet during her journey, she heard news that the partner family's house was on fire. So when the house was burning, Makiko felt a strange smile on her face because she might have felt that her mistakes were erased by the fire. She might have seen it as a way for fate to cleanse her of guilt. Makiko held resentment towards Anzu for entering their lives and seemingly disrupting their family. In a moment of emotional turmoil, Makiko tried to light a cigarette but accidentally dropped a lighter, causing a sudden fire that engulfed the table and its surroundings. Both Anzu and Makiko attempted to put out the flames, but the fire grew larger and harder to control. In the midst of this chaos, it triggered Shinji's past trauma. He reacted irrationally, driven by his memories, and desperately climbed onto the table with all his energy to try and extinguish the flames. Despite sustaining burns in the process, he succeeded in putting out the fire. Unexpectedly, Shinji confessed that the one responsible for the fire at the Midorai family house wasn't his mother or brother but it was actually Shinji himself. On the day of the incident, Shinji noticed Satsuki's cardigan in their apartment, a piece of clothing that their mother had left behind. Intrigued by it, Shinji decided to retrieve the cardigan. However, when he arrived there, his attention shifted to a dish of care, and he got the urge to taste it. In the process, he accidentally knocked over the stove, causing the oven gloves to catch fire. The situation quickly got out of control and Shinji's initial reaction was to flee from the scene. He left the kitchen door open, hoping someone else would notice, but unfortunately, the fire spread rapidly and consumed the Eastern family's house. Witnessing the aftermath and the state of Satsuki, Shinji realized the enormity of his mistake. He felt overwhelmed by guilt and was too afraid to confess to his actions. After hearing Shinji's sincere confession, Anzu immediately urged him to consider the pain his mother and brother endured by taking the blame for him. Although deeply hurt by Shinji's actions, Anzu hoped he would find the courage to apologize to their mother. In front of Satsuki, Shinji once again confessed to causing the fire. He expressed remorse for keeping this secret and for letting Satsuki bear the blame all these years. After hearing Shinji's confession, Satsuki expressed that she didn't like living with suspicions. She decided to move forward and try to put the fire incident behind her. However, when she read about Makiko on the internet, negative thoughts resurfaced. Satsuki realized that people can't be easily categorized as purely good or bad. Although she forgave Shinji for his actions, she admitted that she would always carry this grudge in her heart. For Satsuki, holding a grudge doesn't necessarily mean seeking revenge. It means that the person will always be a part of her memories. She clarified to Shinji that from now on, he must avoid causing harm, as she is a reminder of the consequences of his actions. Kichi was finally released from his burden. He used to suspect his mother for the fire, but seeing Setsuki's scorched socks made him realize that Shinji might have been involved too. Kichi had tried to forget the incident, but his interaction with Anzu brought him to the realization that he couldn't keep avoiding the truth. Protecting a wrongdoer is also a crime. Even though Shinji's actions were accidental, they still couldn't be justified. Kichi understood that if they continued to conceal the truth, they all would deserve punishment. Facing Kichi, 
Shinji expresses regret for not being a better person, but his brother reassures him that it's never too late to change and make amends. Life still goes on. On their way home, Ansu approaches Kichi and Makiko with a heartfelt request. Ansu asks Makiko for permission to be with Kichi, revealing deep feelings of love and a desire to live together. Initially, Ansu believed Makiko was a negative influence who wrongly accused her mother and disrupted their lives. However, Ansu's perspective has evolved, seeing Makiko as a flawed individual just like their own family. Ansu hopes that by being together with Kichi, they can support each other in overcoming their weaknesses. Ansu doesn't want Kichi to continue feeling helpless, as now Anzu is there to provide encouragement. If Anzu's presence is accepted, Kichi is willing to stand by Anzu for a lifetime. Makiko can't control her children's lives anymore. They've grown up and are capable of making their own choices. Three months later, Makiko creates a new online platform. Despite the divorce, she continues to use her ex-husband's last name. As long as she retains her fans, she remains Makiko Midorai. Regarding Shinji, the article mentions that due to his age of 14 during the time of the fire, he cannot be held legally accountable. Shinji pleads with his father for a chance to work at the international hospital. Osamu's tarnished reputation has nearly bankrupted the hospital's future. As a solution, Osamu allows Shinji to join the hospital on the condition that he obtains a doctor's degree. Shinji's determination is sincere, driven by his desire to make things right and turn his life around. He hopes that one day he can bring happiness to the woman he loves, Yuzu. With her communication skills, Yuzu is now employed at a labor agency. Satsuki has completely recovered and is no longer facing health issues. Satsuki's wish is to pursue her dream of studying abroad, a goal she had aspired to before. Yuzu, as her sibling, continues to support their mother's dream. Ansu now collaborates with Korea in designing and crafting clothes for clients from different parts of the world. Even though her life is modest, Ansu finds it to be perfect and is filled with gratitude for her supportive friends, loving family, and a partner who stands by her side. The moral of the story is that love triangles are like cardigans. They can get tangled, but a little honesty unravels the mess.